For Chasm Radio, I'm Farm Director Joe Gill. We're here at World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin. And a chance to talk about, of course, dairy cattle, the people behind the dairy cattle. And we get a chance to celebrate a legacy in cattle, too. Paul Fritchie joining us. Paul, congratulations. You guys are taking this uh, World Dairy Expo stage and getting a chance to celebrate about your family, huh? Right. Um, my grandfather bought his first registered Guernsey in 1928, and so that's... We're celebrating 90 years of registered Guernseys on our farm. We had a little get-together at Minnesota State Fair, and we decided we needed to have one here, too, because we have friends from around the country and around the world that can help us celebrate. Paul, what are your earliest memories of cattle, farm life, when you were a kid? Uh, I, I knew from day one I wanted to farm one way or another. Um, you, know, just, you know, you played tractors and, you know, <laughs> played tractors when you were a kid and sandbox or in the house in the wintertime, and... Just kind of fell into it, that, you know, start feeding calves when I was young, and the easy chores, and same thing we had our kids do. So, mm -hmm. Kind of reading some of the history of your family and such, in yourself, you and your wife, you guys very active, whether it's a board position or anything like that, organizational-wise, you guys have always been active. Right. Um, try to give back. Somebody did it before we did it, and so we try to give back. Uh, I did two terms on the National Dairy Board. That ended a few years back, and I'm still on our state promotion board. Uh, Melanie and I still run a youth show every June. Uh, I think we sell. I think it was the 18th year this year of doing that. So, um, DHI, AMPI, things like that. So, looking at some of the photos, so generation number five in the works, huh? Right. Uh, we got a four-year-old and a two-year-old grandson. Um, they live up in the cities, but they get to the farm every chance they get, and every time it's Sunday time to go home. We want to stay. We want to stay. Um, they got their name on registration papers, so they're the fifth generation to have registered Guernseys in our farm. And you said too that right there's a prime example of why you continue this for that next generation, keeping things rolling. I'll I'll try my darndest. To, <laughs> to, <laughs> it, somebody's got to do it. it, it we got to help feed the country. Um, yeah, it's tough times now, but we've been through through tough times before. My grandpa made it through the depression, and we made it through the 80s, and and uh, we'll get through this one to it. The way it looks, things are looking up. What I've hear hear and read here the last couple days. So we'll see how it works out. I'll believe it when I see it, but still, I, there's hope. As I get older, I feel more and more fortunate because I had a chance to grow up on a dairy farm and. Every chance I get, I like to tell mom and dad, hey, thank you. It's it's one heck of a way to grow up, and you sure learn a lot of things that's going to help you out as an adult as well. Absolutely. I mean, it, they still say, you know, if a kid has, you know, growing up on a farm, on their resume, it helps them. Uh, you know, 4-H, FFA gives you, uh, you know, uh, leadership skills and organizational skills. Uh, kids, you know, I mean, our kids, you, 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 whether it's going to the fair or doing stuff in the field, what other business would somebody turn their, you know, 10, 12 year old kid loose with a, you know, $50,000 combine or a, you know, $5,000 cow and take it to the fair? Uh, it, it's just unheard of in other industries and other facets of America. And, and that's another thing that's great about agriculture and, and uh, kind of like coming here, you know, it's just, you do it, we do it every year. I, I haven't missed very many years since 77 being here and it's, it's old home week and that's part of the reason we want to celebrate tonight, you know, get together with our friends. Paul, well, finally, you know, you look at all the cattle you guys bring. You got favorites that stand out to you saying, you know, this was one of my favorites, or boy, she really did well for us, or, or they all kind of blend together. Oh, no, there's always family favorites. Uh, we had a cow. She was grand at Minnesota in 13 and 14 and 15, and we brought her out here every one of those years. And uh, in 15, she stood second to the cow that ended up being grand champion. And that, I mean, that really did my heart good. And we got a got a four-year-old this year she was first in her class in minnesota and hey, you bring the best you got and you come out here and you're with the best in the world or the best in north america cattle um like i said i was here in 77 and back in those days not to be you know uh, a crude or derogatory but the bottom ends of the classes then were you know county fair type stuff and I tell people now, you could take the bottom animal of every class in here and have a heck of a herd of cows, <laughs> because there's there's no slouches here. Uh -huh. Paul Fritchie, uh, once again, congratulations to you and your family. Uh, one heck of a run, and here's to 90 more, huh? Well, 85 anyway. <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot, Joe. Thanks for coming. You bet. For Casm Radio, we're at World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin.